you doing? been a while since I've built something, so I figured I should build something. Uh, a little while back, um, uh, a nice gentleman got in contact with me and he asked if I could build him a hot water heater for his, um, for his bathtub. He has an outdoor bathtub and uh, wants to heat the water. So uh, it just so happened he caught me at the right time and I was in between just finishing one build and sort of moving on to the next and I, and I agreed. And, um, and it's been fun. Um, what you're looking at here is two halves of what will be a J-type rocket stove. This being the infeed, and uh, this is the riser. And inside the riser, I'm going to stick a copper coil, or at least that's the plan. Um, if you look in the background, I'm gonna try a trick today to try to get a very tight bend on this copper pipe without it kinking. And um, I'm gonna fill it with sand. It's something that my dad, a trick that my dad taught me, and uh, and I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that, but um, it just hasn't. I haven't done much work with copper pipe, so what do you do? Now what I have here are compression fittings with some um, just some caps to go on the end. Basically, you're um, you're filling the pipe with sand so that it can't compress, and if it can't compress it can't, the walls can't collapse and I'm going to maintain, um, I'm going to maintain a reasonable shape in the pipe. Uh, but I've got to pack the sand in there pretty good. So I'll stop the abbering and I'll start doing that. Ah. So what I've come up with is I'm going to use this little orbital sander. Um, it's, it's one of those things, it's, um, the Velcro is completely worn off the, um, 
the, the pad there, and so I was actually contemplating throwing it out, but I'm really glad I didn't now. Because that's, um, that's going to vibrate like crazy, and I've just got to work out how to stick it on there. Yes, all right. I think we have a copper pipe full of sand. That compression fitting feels a bit loose. I better tighten those up. Uh, I'm going to tack this bit of pipe in the middle of this bench. And because it's on wheels, I'm going to wheel her outside and I'm going to try to wrap that copper pipe around this. This is a 100mm OD. No, actually, it's probably less than that. Uh, where's the tape measure? Hmm, try 90mm OD. This is a, um, a 6013 rod. It's just a general purpose, all directional. Probably wasn't designed to weld stainless steel to a galvanized table, but you know, desperate times, desperate measures. That's why you always hear traffic noise in the background. There's a major highway. It's not crushing. It's deforming a little bit. Oh, to the light. It's deforming a little bit, but um, it's still we're still maintaining uh, ba the basic round shape. I mean, oh, such a relief. Okay, if you have a look here, you see that nasty kink? That's what happened the first time I tried to bend this around. Uh, even a larger diameter pipe, it just went. And look at that. I mean, maybe I should go into making stills. No, I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> Had to go and rob it off the house. All right. Well, that's interesting. Oh, goodness.
here, baby. So we're getting down to the meat and potatoes of the things now. What I need to do is trim this coil so I can slide it up through there. I have a grinder sitting right here. Beautiful. Nice. We can stick these two halves together now. I'm sure there are plumbers out there watching me right now just pounding their fists on the computer the keyboard and or smashing their iPhone against the brick wall. But I'm not a plumber. Now this lovely straight bit of copper pipe here is not annealed. So you can, you can get two types of copper. It's the same material, there's nothing different. It's just one has been heat treated and softened and one this one hasn't so this one is quite hard um, and will not bend not easily and if it does it won't be pretty and that stuff there has been uh, well it started off annealed or soft and what happens is when you work copper is it the, the material uh, work hardens like any material you can only bend it so many times every time you bend it you um, yeah it, it gets harder it gets it becomes less ductile but enough talking about things that I think I know about or don't. plumber and you're watching me. Yep. Pound that keyboard, baby.
bit of copper pipe is going to be smoking hot now. And as you can see, you can see just how far down the heat travelled. And the thing that I've I've only done this a couple of times, but what I what I can what I've noticed about TIG brazing copper pipe is that just how thermal conductive it is. It just sucks that heat away. And even though melt, copper has a relatively low melting point um, compared to other steels, you find yourself sitting there in the one spot, pouring the heat into it with the TIG with the arc, just trying to get the metal saturated enough to the point where it's going to take the, the, um, the silicon bronze. So I sort of I had to pause a lot and just keep what, working the torch, working the torch until finally um, um, and just keep trying to add a little bit of filler, testing it, testing it. Oh, there we go, it's taking it now. And then you just, you just go. And just that little pause in having to stop and rotate it um, was enough for it to lose, for the heat to sort of transfer through the pipe to the point where it wouldn't take the... Um, take the bronze anymore <laughs> so and um, so yeah it, it's an interesting thing Both sort of coming out at a similar sort of an angle and a crazy sort of a bend. We're starting to take shape. a little bit tricky. I might go cool this off and uh, we'll check see if it's watertight. This one's good. Good. I can't see any water leaking around that now. All that water on the outside was before was from just when I was cooling it off. I'm going to call that watertight. Now, before I go finishing off all the plumbing, I'm going to completely weld this joint because there'll be a pipe sort of running down and that's going to be fun just for weld around. So let's weld this out and I'll finish up the pipe. TIG braze, sorry, this last elbow joint, and hopefully I get that watertight. It's going to be a little bit tricky getting around that. Okay, 
I've got, a, I've got a prop on this copper pipe. I need to use this tick finger. Um, these are great. This sort of thing. Thank you, Jody. I would not be able to do that well without this tick finger, that's just excellent. I knew this bit was coming. I've got to somehow get my tick torch right in under there. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm might just have to bend the whole thing up out of the way and bend it back and hope I don't kink the pipe too much. I knew this was coming and it was sort of unavoidable unless I wanted to cut a big slit down this so I could, you know, split the tube so I could um, put it in there. Maybe actually that would have been the better thing to do, would have been to split to, sorry, so you can see what I'm talking about, would have been to split the tube, cut it right down there before I joined it all together have this all prefabricated, just wedge it apart, slide the whole thing in, and then just have a, a seam, a weld going right down the side. If you're going to do this, I'd recommend that because I've sort of welded myself into a corner now. But I'm going to see if I can um, overcome that. But yeah, for future reference, anyone out there who's considering building this thing, yeah, split, split your top tube, um, yeah, wedge it apart, have all your coil, copper coil prefabricated, Slide it in. I'll stop talking now. I've got a fair bit of stick out on my tungsten for the moment to get down in there. It's not desirable, but it's um, just it's unavoidable. Just there. Beautiful. I can get at that now. And it's very hot. That's burning me through my gloves. Well, so this thing stops trying to roll off my bench. I am going to put some feet on it. Um, the feet I've got are these two bits of flashing that I found at work. We were cleaning up, and I was given the, ble the uh, boss's blessing to whatever I could fit in my car within reason um, I could have. So I scored these two nice little bits, sort of pre-folded, and they're going to make lovely feet for this. So I'm just going to cut these to size and weld them on. Remember, you can only cut as straight as the line that you can follow. So the more defined your line is, the better chances you are of actually getting a straight cut. So it's worth spending a little bit of time marking this sort of stuff out. I think Aaron must be playing the piano up at the house. I could hear, I could hear music. It sounded like my phone was ringing. Anyway. Now, to set the height of the legs, I'm going to use this bit of 75 by 75, just a little bit of off-cut box. Sit that up on top. The fun thing is going to be getting this straight up and down parallel. It's kind of disgusting, but it's working. The third hand is holding. <laughs> Is balancing that. Oh gosh. Okay. So as long as I don't breathe around the stove, it won't fall over and it should be good. What can go wrong?
Right, as you can see, this coil is like a stocking on a chicken's lip. Yep, that's sort of a fit. Um, and I think I know how I'm going to fix it. This is our 2.4mm 316 stainless steel filler wire. All right, Liz, I need you to hold something for me. It's dangerous coming down to the ship. Yeah. Uh, have this block. So I'll just push down on that. Okay. So come where I am, because I want me to stand there. Okay. And that's perfect. Perfect. You're not going to get burnt. Um, tick welding is very precise. Um, the only way you could get burnt is... I won't. <laughs> I assure you. Trust me, I'm a welder. Let's go. Oh, and just hold it and hold down until I say eyes. Keep holding. That's one side done. It's not even getting part of it. Okay. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. I just chopped off these um, these dowels. I'm going to leave them in there until for the first test run. Let that burn them out. Just <laughs> it's just easier. Okay, you can see the little saddle front. Let's fly around. We have our two saddles. Holding the pipe on, I've just tick raised those, tick raised those on. And I might have said at the start that I thought this was stainless steel, but I had my doubts. And it is in fact just mild steel, it's chromed. So tick brazing isn't a bad option as far as, you know, I've got stainless steel welded onto mild steel. Uh, silicon bronze is, I mean, is, is a good way of going. You could use 309 stainless steel filler wire, that's the other. That's that's the really the proper and strong way of TIG welding steel to to stainless steel, but I don't have any 309 wire, so TIG bracing is my other option. Just going to sit at the top. Good. Eighty mil. Oh, that's a good guess. Up, that's the top. That's the top of the stove. It's coming. Down to 70 mil.
<laughs> I should have left it. The front of the clamp is actually wedging off the pipe and it's holding it in place, so again, nobody breathe. Gosh, I just made a smiley face. Two hundred and ten mils. Exactly. Well, oh. this isn't the flattest bit of stainless steel. How long does it need to be? About two hundred. This bit of sheet metal is a little bit out of square on one corner, so I'll just mark the out of square corner as the back. That way, um, yeah, the square edge will be to the front and it'll keep the, the drawer and everything square and, you know, keep things looking good. Oh, look at that. Save me center punching it and putting a putting a dent in it.
nice handle to pull the drawer out with. Let's get out of the dark side of the shed. I mean, that's what it looks like. It's fairly ugly, but the, the main thing is that I didn't blow through and any penetration on the outside. Again, this is why I love silicon bronze. You can get away with, um, with big dirty beads like that and no penetration. Now, if you look, just as a side note, You can run this with it out a little bit further and that'll, that sort of increases the opening here. It'll give you a hotter burn and that sort of will reduce it. And, um, and I don't think you'll need to be a, have to play with the settings on this really much more than that. I think at the end of the day, if you're trying to boil water, you're going to want this thing to run flat out. So that's probably where it's going to run the best. That's my, um, that's my guess <laughs> for what it's worth. Now we need to test to see if this thing actually works. Um, to do that, I'm fairly confident it will. I've got this 205 litre plastic drum and I'm going to plumb this thing up So, and we're going to heat some water, basically. I'm going to use, to plumb it, just some regular stock standard run-of-the-mill, not, not the cheapest, but you know, um, garden hose. Probably not the best idea, but for a test, it's just going to be really simple to hook up these fittings. Like, I would not set it up like this if I was going to use this all the time. I would go something a little bit more hardcore. Um, something designed for the job, which this isn't. But this is just a test. So, um, you know, once this is finished, this is going to um, the gentleman that asked me to build it for him. And I won't have need for all this stuff. So I might as well get fittings that I can use around the house and... You know, we can always use an extra garden hose. So that's why I'm doing that. <laughs> Hold off on those nasty comments. I know, I know. It's just, just, it's just a, an economic way for me to test it. Alrighty, now this drum used to be uh, my rubbish bin, and it's just uh, just a chemical drum that I got from there. It just had a, a cleaning foam in it, and uh, it already had this hole in the bottom, just so that when I, you know, if we're sitting outside, it wouldn't fill up with water. But that's okay. Because 
I could put this sucker in there, which is, this is actually um, a fitting design to go into drums. It's got two nice big rubber washers. So I'm going to first fit this tap in the bottom just so it's easy to, you know, get your hot water in and out because <laughs> there's no point in um, making hot water and not having a means of uh, actually getting access to it unless you feel like showering under a bucket. Now the thing with thermal siphoning is that basically the only reason it works is because you've got two different temperatures um, and so hot water likes to stay at the top of the drum and cold water likes to stay at the bottom, you know, because hot air rises and it's the same deal with water. Hot water will always come to the top. Um, and so basically as the water goes into the rocket stove, it gets heated, it naturally wants to go up. So, yeah, it, the process will start to slow down as the water starts to heat up. So the colder the water is, the quicker it'll thermal siphon. Uh, and eventually, I guess, it gets to a point where it's barely moving at all. But I, there will always be a slight difference in water temperature, um, particularly in an uninsulated drum like this. So, it, so I'm saying I like to say we want one of our water, one of our inlets to be right down the bottom and because uh, that's where the water is going to be the coldest. Actually do that up quite tight. Just if you're wondering, um, that's a, a three-quarter inch hole, according to this um, step drill that's in Imperial. Hopefully the nut tightening up on this plastic will create some sort of a seal. All right. I can start filling this thing with water. Well, now we're just going to fill this up. We're going to discover pretty quickly whether or not these um, leak. Um, I can, I'll, I'll tolerate a slight dribble. It's, this is purely a, a, a test. And, and for those concerned about the chemical that was in this drum, I'm not going to be drinking this water, I'm not going to be bathing in it, I'm not going to be doing anything with it. This is, this is uh, purely a test just to see how quickly this system will heat up 200 litres of water. Um, I've got that sitting on a little stool that I made. Um, I just wanted to get the, the drum up off the ground a bit just so it's easier to operate that tap and, uh, and also I think it's important that the, that the water head be above the height of the stove just that way I know that every square inch of this, um, of this copper pipe is going to be, have water in it at all times and I think that's important uh, for the process to work uh, but I might the top of that stool isn't as big as the base of the drum and it might become unstable so I'm, I might have to just drop it on the ground anyway and uh, maybe chock it up on a bit of wood. In fact, I might just do that anyway. We'll go on the safe side. That's better. Gives me something to sit on too. Well, that's good. The um, just screwing that fitting into the plastic and a nut on the back without any sort of rubber washer. That's below waterline now. That's that's holding water. Um, yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, good to know. We're off to a flying start. Okay, we are full. I filled it to just so it's half covering this um, this inlet, so it's sort of yeah, just that. It's I just want to be able to see the movement of water. So if I completely cover it, it won't be as obvious. So I'm hoping that this will give me what I'm after. Ah, 
Okay, water temperature is 23 degrees 0.6 C. So we'll go, we'll go Fahrenheit, and there it is in Fahrenheit. So it's rather lovely. Uh, it's it's kind of a hot day today. Uh, it's sort of the last day you want to be making um, <laughs> making hot water, but you know what? It's just this how it is. Now, when I light this, this is going to smoke a bit more than normal, and that's because if you remember, I used dowel to um, to hold the the coil sort of in the centre of the the riser. So the, that dowel is going to have to burn out, and as it's burning out because of where it's burning, it's going to create a bit more smoke than normal. So just keep that in mind. And uh, let's light this. Okay, so the time is one o'clock. And let's see how long it takes to get it up to sort of like a, a comfortable bathing temperature. Look at that. Look at that. That's what I wanted to see. Constant circulation. Wow, and this hose is, is this garden hose is quite hot. Let's just see how this is going. Now, okay. This side still feels cool, like I can actually touch that there. Um, and this side is quite warm, but the, the hose fitting, well, obviously, if I can touch it, it's not going to melt, so. Oh, yeah, that's why. That's really good. That's excellent. Water is still just nicely circulating. Cue the circulation. And that water is, um, I don't think I want to stick my hand straight in it. For that reason. Now, I had to just support this, this, this hose. That I'd have to say that just from this initial experiment that a garden hose is perfectly acceptable down the bottom. Um, that is not getting hot. So that's the hose going into the bottom of the coil, and this is the hose exiting the top of the coil. At the top of the coil, it's pretty stinking hot. Hang on. I wish you could see that tornado. It's just beautiful. Let's just see what the water temperature is doing there. Well, there you go. There you go. It's a white coming straight out of there. Wow. Yeah, okay. I might need to put a lid on that just to stop this sort of back burning. It's going up quick. It's getting good. Ugh. All right, I'm going to bring you guys back when this thing's um, up to temperature. We'll just see um, how long that takes. I just added. Um, just a couple of, you know, another inch of water just so I'm covering this outlet. Ouch, this water is hot now. And um, and it's done something that I... Truck. It's done something that I suspected that it would do. It's actually sped up the um, the whole thermal siphoning process because... Watch, watch this. Now watch what happens. It, suck, it actually sucks back. It, it has a big gulp. But, and so what's happening now is because it, it has 
it has an opportunity to suck back. It's bringing more water into the system and keeping the, the siphoning process more um, consistent. It's actually sped up the whole process. Um, I suspected that would be the case. Uh, I don't know why, that was just my gut feeling that both ends sort of needed to be under the water for this to work better. Um, and yeah, and that's sort of what's happened. Uh oh, what have we got here? So this hose fitting is very hot and it's not coping. Ah, uh, that's okay. We'll see how long it lasts. This, this experiment might be cut short, but I knew that was the risk. This is running great. Um, I'm just throwing big, big lumps of kindling straight into the front here and sort of running it more like a batch box style stove and that seems to be giving the best result. You wouldn't want to be sitting in this thing while it's running. Um, not unless you had that sort of had a snout on it facing down so it's not sort of, you know. I mean, could you imagine that squirting you in the face? That would not be cool. But yeah. So you sort of if, if you had if you had to sit in it while it was running, I'd have a um, a little doohickey that comes out and goes down, a little angle, right angle. Yeah. So we started burning this at one one o'clock. It's now two thirty. So what's that? An hour and a half. And uh, let's. Ooh, steam. Gee, that's all right. Uh, yep, I do. Ow, oh, yeah, okay. I'm a sook when it comes to hot water. I'd rather it cooler than hotter. So that's pretty darn good. So just feeling the outside, that's quite hot to the touch. And around about halfway down, we're sort of warm and of course probably right at the bottom um well, it's, it's yeah let's just see what the gun says Alrighty. so there you go um so she works so i reckon if you if this was a bathtub you'd give that a good stir and it'd probably be perfect so that's a lot better than I thought, to be honest. I was expecting, I was guessing about a three, this maybe would take three hours, but I've never done this before. So for all the bother it was to, to, form, to form that larger copper tube into a coil, it seems that it's, I'm looking for my camera stand, it would seem that that, that was absolutely worth the trouble, just for the um, getting that extra volume um, through the coil, I think has really helped. Uh, the hose fittings, uh, the inlet's held up just fine. <clears throat> but that's still, that's actually, that feels cool to the touch, the water going in. Um, but this one, as you can see, it's started to drip. Um, but that's, you know, I, I sort of was expecting that. This wouldn't hold up. But this was all about just to seeing how the thermal the thermal siphoning worked and it was um, this is not how you'd set it up uh, for real you'd use pr some proper um, sort of plumbing pipe I'm no plumber <laughs> don't ask me what to use um, just do some research for yourself if you want to know how to do this properly this is just a quick just a quick test so thank you very much for watching um, please um, please like subscribe comment all that stuff, I'm supposed to say that, I think. <laughs> and yeah. And this is this is um this has been a really this has been a really good build. Um it's very practical. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you later. Bye.